Now with the problem being defined, let's see why the VLANs wouldn't be good enough. Because as I already mentioned, traditionally we are solving these problems with VLANs. We would implement virtual segments with VLANs and VLANs would immediately provide layer two connectivity that we need for VM mobility. So that all looks great. The only problem is that we have to provision the VLANs in the hypervisor, in the virtual switch, and we have to provision them in the physical switch. And someone has to do the physical switch provisioning every time you deploy a new VLAN or a new subnet. Let's say you deploy this blue subnet. Someone obviously has to configure the blue VLAN on the physical switches. There are all sorts of solutions that the networking vendors are trying to sell you that would automate that. Some of them work great, some of them not so well. But regardless of everything else, even if you manage to automate everything, a layer two network still remains a single broadcast and thus a single failure domain. And I'm not talking just about spanning tree. Even if you have a trill based layer two network and you get into a broadcast storm, you will have a broadcast storm. On top of everything else, this is how we actually provision VLANs in most data centers. The virtualization or server or application people need another VLAN, they call someone, someone picks up the phone, they agree on the VLAN number, and then someone goes and actually installs all the virtual patch cables, well, provisions the ports on all the switches. If this wouldn't be bad enough, we have all sorts of scalability constraints with VLANs. The first one is obvious, we only have 4,000 VLANs. The second one, not so very obvious, the MAC addresses of all the VMs you're running in your data center are usually visible throughout the layer two core. Some switches, and you should really check what your vendor is doing or um, describing the limitations of individual data center switches in the data center fabrics webinar and update those numbers every six months. So some vendors have really low numbers of MAC addresses they support on individual switches. And once a layer two switch runs out of MAC addresses, it starts flooding packets, which if nothing else, increases the load throughout your network. Also, keep in mind that hypervisors cannot use hardware in Ethernet NIC cards to receive traffic for as many VMs as they have, because the hardware in the NICs usually supports only a few MAC addresses. And if you have 100 VMs running on that hypervisor, obviously you run out of MAC addresses. Every single hypervisor software immediately puts the interface card in promiscuous mode so that it can receive all the traffic for all the VMs which means that everything that's flooded, even if it's totally irrelevant to the hypervisor receiving it, the hypervisor still has to look at that in the CPU, in the interrupt code, and figure out that it doesn't need that packet and throws it away. Combine that with the common design where the networking team is just saying, well, you know, we don't want to configure individual VLANs for your servers. So just tell us the VLAN range that you need and we'll configure every VLAN on every server port. Now the hypervisors have to process all the flooded packets for all the VLANs in this range, even if the hypervisor itself has no active VM in that VLAN. So from the scalability perspective, this is almost identical to a single VLAN spanning the whole layer two domain. And while people might have different opinions about how many hosts in a single broadcast domain make sense, the Trill RFC is very honest and it says, well, you know, in a single bridge domain, a single broadcast domain, you should have around 1,000 end hosts, which in our case means around 1,000 virtual machines. So if you have 1,000 virtual machines, be my guest, use VLANs. If you have more, maybe you need something else. And we never ever mentioned spanning tree. Whatever I've described so far applies equally well to every other layer two data center fabric solution, even if it's based on SPB or Trill or whatever else. 
And of course, the networking industry wants to keep us here so that they can offer technologies to solve this problem. And this is what the networking industry is telling you. Okay, we recognize that your hypervisors are flooded, but don't worry, we can implement VM-aware networking where the top of rack switches will do VLAN pruning. So here on the server ports, we will automatically configure only those VLANs that the hypervisors really need. By the way, we are aware that spanning tree is not good, so we can do routing for layer two for MAC addresses, and we'll use ISIS, and then you can use either SPB or Trill. And yes, we understand that blocked links are a bad idea, but don't worry, we have equal cost multipath routing at layer two, which some people call browting. And yes, we understand that 4000 VLANs is not good enough for you, but don't worry, there's this other standard Q in Q, which just adds another VLAN tag, so we have that covered. And yeah, it's not good that every switch needs to know about all the MAC addresses, but don't worry, we have this other standard, provider backbone bridging, where we encapsulate the VM MAC frame in another MAC frame. And by the way, Trill uses the same technology, and provider backbone bridging encapsulation is actually used by SPB. So yes, the core switches will not know about the MAC addresses. Oh, and there's still too much flooding. Oh, don't worry, we can do VLAN pruning in the core with something like VTP or MVRP or what have you. So don't worry, we can make all this work. Just to recap what I've told you, you would need something like EVB, which is 802.1 QBG, or VN Tracer for Arista, or Hyperlink from Dell Force 10, or VM Fax from Cisco, or whatever, to limit the VLANs on the edges. And then you would need Trill or SPB, or a proprietary solution like Fabric Path, or VCS Fabric, or QFabric. And then you would need something like QNQ, or provide a backbone bridging. And then you would need MVRP or VTP or something like that. And then you would have to configure BPDU guard and storm control and a few other things just to make sure that we don't get flooded with broadcast because we are still in one broadcast domain. And after all this, you would still have a single failure domain because we still have a single broadcast domain. This discussion that's so favored by some people in the networking industry really reminds me of RFC 1925, which says with sufficient thrust, Picks will fly just fine. But you do have to remember that someone is paying for the fuel. And that's us. All these features add complexity. They add to the cost of the switches. They add to the complexity of the network. They add to the complexity of troubleshooting the network. And we are paying for all that. So can we do any better? I'm always using a voice analogy. We are moving from the manual exchanges and we can go to more and more and more complex exchanges. Here on the left hand side, this is a relay exchange from the 1970s. Or we could move to Skype and we could just run virtual networks over IP like Skype is running voice over IP. So how would that look? Well, the network, the physical network, like in voice over IP, should supply just the simple IP transport. And all the complex stuff should be performed in the end hosts, in our case, the virtual switches. All the virtual traffic that is generated between the VMs just becomes another IP application. Like voice is another IP application, like storage is another IP application, vMotion is another IP application, and now the virtual machine traffic becomes another IP application. And of course, there are a number of decision points, and we'll discuss most of them in this webinar. So shall we do layer 2 or layer 3 switching in the hypervisor? Which encapsulation should we use? Should we use a proper control plane with controllers or orchestration system or something else? Or should we just use flooding like in physical layer 2 segments? And finally, most importantly, how will we connect this with the outside world? Ignoring those details for the moment, the idea of having a simple network and smart edges that do the encapsulation and then use IP as a transport fabric sounds exactly like internet. 
and it allows you to build your data center like internet. So it is totally scalable and you can use the existing technologies you already know from the internet world to build the layer three fabrics in your data center. To find other virtual networking, data center and cloud networking webinars, visit ipspace.net.